Okay, so um, I'm going to show you the vessels that I use here. These are both actually thrift store finds. So this is just a little um, cast iron enamel coated crock pot um, that I found in a thrift store. And I think it's the perfect size. I don't know what size it is. Maybe, maybe the size of like my largest saucepan. Um, but I think it makes a, a beautiful crochet shape when I make bread around crochet. And then this is a clay, an unfinished clay loaf pan um, with a lid. And I don't know, does this have a brand? It's called a Super Stone. <laughs> okay. But, but the point is, you could do it in just a regular uh, pot with a tight-fitting lid. If you have a Dutch oven, um, Dutch ovens are great. It doesn't have to be a small one. It can be a large one. Um, and it won't like make the bread like flatten out a whole lot if you use a larger one. Like here, I'll show you. Like for a long time before I found that smaller one, I used this one, which is my soup pot. And, you know, it did fine. So, whatever you have. The point, though, is that you want something that has a lid. And the reason for that is that this is a very wet dough, and you're making an oven within your oven. And you're steaming the bread, basically. And that's what gives it that nice, uh, uh, crust, that nice crusty, thick crust uh, that's like a peasant bread feeling to it. Um, in fact, like if you were making like a French bread, which I can also show you how to make, the, you would, <coughs> you would, uh, you know, it wouldn't be as wet of a bread, but you would knead the dough and then you would let it rise and then you would punch it down and then you would shape it into loaves and then let it rise again. And then when you put it into your oven to bake, what you do to make French bread is you throw a cup of water directly in the oven, throw your dough in there, and then shut the door and let it bake in that steamy environment. And that's what gives French bread, a French bread baguette, its nice crust. So you're doing kind of the same thing, but you're doing it in this case with a covered vessel. That's the, that's the only difference. Okay. So let me move these out of the way. Now, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to show you how to prepare your bread. And I have cleaned my hands, and I have also cleaned the countertop. And I have uh, quartz countertops, so I do it directly on the countertop. Um, if you don't have something that the bread won't stick really easily to, you can also use something like Here's a, a Silpat, uh, I don't know what you would call this, baking thing. But you could, uh, you could put your dough on this. And if you're making pie crust, it has some nice uh, guidelines here that you can use to, to roll out your pie crust. Um, but it won't stick on this. And also you can put Silpat directly in the oven and it won't burn. Um, so you can use these to like line your baking sheets or whatever. But uh, <clears throat> pie dough is pie, pie crust is a lesson for another day. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to show you how to shape these loaves. So I'm going to just take some flour here and sprinkle a little bit on my on my directly on my countertop. And I'm going to dust my hands with a little bit of flour. So I'm going to do the, um, the wheat bread first. And I don't know if you can get this or not, but when I pull the wheat bread out of the thing, out of the, you can see how it just kind of rolls out. That's because it's developed some nice gluten strands in there overnight. So I'm just going to pour that out basically onto the countertop. 
it doesn't really stick very much. All right, and this is how you shape, shape your, your bread. I'm going to do the round one with this one. Okay, so you fold it over, you fold it over, fold it over, you pick it up, you shape it into a little loaf, and then I have some little pieces of parchment paper here. You don't have to use these, but you put it on something, and there you have it. And you just let that sit there <clears throat> and rest for a little while until your oven is, is preheated. Okay, so there's the... <clears throat> and notice I did not do any kneading. In fact, the less you fuss with this, the better. Okay, so now I'm going to do the same thing with my white bread dough. Again, nice gluten strands have formed. This one is a little bit stickier. I'm just going to pour it out onto the counter there. And there's a little bit that stayed in the bowl. I'll get that out. And put a little more flour in my hands. You don't want to add a lot of flour to this dough, so don't overdo it. Fold it over. Fold it over. Fold it over again. Now this one is going to be a loaf in that loaf uh, thing. So I am going to work this one a little bit more just enough to get it lengthened out into a loaf shape. Okay, and that'll do it, I think, right there. And then I'm going to let this rest for a bit. So, I've got another little piece of parchment shape paper. Again, you do not have to use parchment paper. I just do because it makes it a little bit more convenient for me. And I'm going to put that right on there. Now, the reason you let these rest for a bit is because um, you're letting the gluten uh, realign to the new shape, basically. Um, <clears throat> If you didn't let it rest, it would be fine. This is a very forgiving bread. <clears throat> so, um, and they'll also rise just a little bit more. Um, so I'm gonna let those rest. What I'm gonna do now is, and this is a very important step, I'm going to preheat my oven to 450 for uh, about at least a half an hour and probably more like 45 minutes to an hour while my bread rests and while I go and do other things. And, um, let's see here, there we go. And I am going to preheat my oven with my baking vessels in the oven. So your baking vessels are actually getting very, very hot. And that's an extremely important step to this, okay? So, I've got my oven on, I'm going to put my baking vessels in with the lids on. Okay, I had taped a segment to go here, but it didn't have audio for some reason, so I'll just tell you what it was about. So what I did was, um, I just took the, so I had preheated the oven with the vessels in it for, with the lids on for about 45 minutes. Um, and then what I did was I pulled the hot vessels out and uh, then I just plopped the dough right into the vessels, put the lids on, uh, put it back in the oven and to, to bake for about a half an hour. Um, and also I had sprinkled some uh, cornmeal on top of the loaves and on one of the loaves I had used reg regular kitchen scissors and cut a few little slices in the top just for decoration. Um, I usually actually put cornmeal on the parchment paper before I put the dough on it uh, initially. Uh, I didn't do that for some reason, but I usually do that. Okay, so uh, we'll just go from here. Okay, so my bread's been baking for a half hour. So I'm going to come in here. Oh, steam. That's a good thing. 
going to pull the lids off. There we go. Show you what these look like at this point. So they've risen nicely. I, I like them just a little bit more brown than that though. And so I'm going to shut the oven door and let them bake uncovered for about another 10 minutes. Okay, I just took a look at the bread. It's been about eight minutes actually, but it's getting plenty brown. So I'm going to go ahead and pull it out of the oven. And see what we got. Okay. Now, here, I'll show these to you in a second. Okay, so here is the wheat bread, and or actually that's the white bread, and I'm going to pull that out, and I have a, uh, so here's what it looks like, and I have a uh, wire rack sitting over here. And we're going to set them on the wire rack and let them cool completely. If the kids were here, they would be cutting into the bread and uh, while it's still hot or warm and slathering butter all over it, which is fine, you can do that. But I encourage you to let it cool because um, it um, keeps its moisture a little bit better if you let it cool before you cut into it. Speaking of which, this is not a, you know, this doesn't, this is not a commercial bread. It doesn't have preservatives and stuff in it. So once you cut it, you really need to eat it because um, it only lasts really well for a couple of days. Um, and when you, and then, you know, I put it in a plastic bag once I cut into it. Um, it also freezes well. So you can freeze it if you want to. Here's the, uh, the whole wheat bread. Um, it it kind of actually it doesn't matter a whole lot if some of it goes to waste because this is pennies. It costs pennies, literally pennies, to make a loaf of this bread. And so um, probably what I'll do is uh, uh, cut cut one loaf in half and freeze the other half and then give the other loaf to a neighbor or something. So. So there you go. I used to I used to make this bread, um, you know, twice a week, pretty religiously for years. But now that I'm on my own, I just make it for special occasions. But I do enjoy when I make it, so I, I probably ought to make it more often. Okay. All right. So make some bread and be creative and send me pictures and uh, bring me some if you want to. <laughs> All right. Bye.